Science is different. It's a hands-on class where we get into lab and do experiments. Science is a class where we do stuff, but we've got to be safe. The start of a school year is a very exciting time. I get a brand new set of students coming into my class ready to learn science. Now in a science class, we have got to be safe. The teacher has responsibilities for safety and the student has responsibilities for safety. In this demonstration, this tube will represent a class who did not follow lab instructions or safety procedures. This tube will represent a class who did follow lab instructions and safety procedures. This solution will represent my contribution to these classes. I'm going to add this solution in equal amount here and here. Let's see how the unsafe class reacts. Not much happens. Let's see how the safe class reacts. This appears to be a fun and safe science class. When I'm safe, when you're safe, we all have a great time. Let's take a look at two students and their attire that they brought into lab today. Here we have a student coming to lab. Notice her baggy sleeves, her open-toed shoes, her stylish scarf, wild hair, dangly jewels, and goggles posing as neck protection. Hmm, I don't think so. Here we have another student coming to lab. Notice her closed-toed shoes, her lab apron, she's wearing no baggy clothing, her hair is tied back, and she's wearing goggles properly. She's definitely ready for lab. Oh, look! A Bunsen burner! We must be heating something up in lab today. Your hair is up in a ponytail. Not nearly as cool as mine. <gasps> look! There's Brad! Where? I don't see him. Where's he at? Oh! Oh! Oh, my hair's up there! Oh! Whoa! Bad choice? Good choice. Hey, when we're in science class and we're dealing with fire, you want to make sure that you make the good choice and not the bad. What is going on here? This is a science lab, folks. You guys have all kinds of extra stuff that you don't even need. You got backpacks and scarves and folders and papers. This stuff has got to go. In lab, all you really need is a calculator, a pencil, your lab sheet, and any appropriate materials as instructed by your teacher. That's it. Everything else could be a safety hazard. You never eat or drink in a science laboratory. Let me see this. This right here, you don't know what kind of residual chemicals have been left inside this beaker. Let's check and see. Whoa, that would be terrible to drink from. Let's take a closer look at what may have been on this table. As you can see, there was a chemical spill that had never been properly cleaned up. As you note, it was picked up by our Twinkie. Let's look at our student's fingers. Notice that he even has residual chemicals on his fingers. Never eat or drink in a science laboratory. Here we are in lab, and as you can see, lab's kind of a crowded place. We've got lots of students in here, 
Lab is not for erratic behavior. Let me show you what I mean. That is the wrong way. In lab, you need to make sure that your actions are very purposeful and your moves are thought through. No erratic behavior. We want to be safe. It is imperative that you follow all written and verbal instructions given by your teacher. Here we have two students in lab. Please notice that both of them are unsure what to do next. One student correctly waits and asks for help, while the other student proceeds without caution. The results are very different. Make sure that you ask for help. Never perform any unauthorized experiments or take chemicals from a stockroom or from a lab. Never work alone and never work without your teacher's permission. We want you to be safe. It is important to use safety equipment properly. Now we have two types of safety equipment, classroom safety equipment and personal safety equipment. Personal safety equipment includes goggles, aprons, and gloves. These are examples of personal safety equipment. Classroom safety equipment may include a fire blanket, a fire extinguisher, a first aid kit, an eye wash station, and a safety shower. If you get something in your eye during a science experiment, you may need to use the eye wash station. All you do is turn on, open your eyes as far as you can and wash for 15 to 20 minutes. Let me demonstrate. When you use a fire extinguisher, you need to remember the acronym PASS, P-A-S-S. -S. P stands for pull the pin. A stands for aim at the base of the flame. The first S stands for squeeze, and the last S stands for sweep, back and forth. Again, that's PASS, P-A-S-S, -S. pull, aim, Squeeze and sweep. In science class, we deal with a lot of exciting, yet dangerous materials. Remember, don't taste anything. Please notice these two substances, sodium bicarbonate and sodium carbonate. While these substances look alike and sound alike, they react very differently. It is extremely important that you read labels very carefully. In science class, sometimes we want to identify a substance according to its smell. Now, there are two ways to do this. There's a right way and there's a wrong way. Right now, I'm going to show you the wrong way to identify a substance according to its smell. Now, if this substance were an acid or possibly ammonia, those vapors would have gone up into my nasal passages and possibly caused death. Now, I'm going to show you the right way to identify a substance according to its smell. It's called wafting. Simply fan a small amount of the vapor in front of your nose to identify its smell. Now, it's a lot better than... Let's waft. 
We must always handle acids and bases with extreme caution. This egg contains proteins that are very similar to our eyes and our skin. I'm going to destroy this egg with sulfuric acid. This egg has been destroyed, much like the proteins in your skin and eyes would be destroyed if they came in contact with an acid or a base. Flammable liquids start on fire. In science class, we often deal with flammable liquids. Anytime you're in lab using a Bunsen burner, an alcohol burner, or even a hot plate, make sure that all flammable substances are far away. In a science class, when you carry your transport chemicals, make sure you use two hands, keep your elbows in, and walk defensively. When you're carrying or transporting chemicals, let's not have an accident. Ho, 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 wait, wait, wait. Never dispose of anything without first consulting with your teacher. Never assume that any substance can be just poured down the drain. Always consult with your teacher. When you're in lab, always be alert for safety hazards, which can include broken and chipped glassware, as well as frayed cords. Let your teacher know if you ever see any safety hazards or concerns in lab. Glass breaks in a science classroom. You can pick up glass with your hands only if you're wearing protective gloves. The rest can be picked up with a broom and a dustpan. Place it in the appropriate container. In science class, we often heat stuff up. You may use a Bunsen burner, a hot plate, or maybe even an alcohol burner. We must exercise extreme caution when heating things up. Remember, never ever have flammable liquids near a heating device. This is a Bunsen burner. I'm going to demonstrate how to properly light this particular model of Bunsen burner. First, strike the match. Second, lower the match, turn on the gas, bring it up from the bottom, and it's lit. I want to also show you this particular flame is not the kind of flame that you want for a Bunsen burner. Too much fuel, not enough oxygen. I'm going to adjust this particular model by twisting up. I know that I have a good flame when I hear a gentle roar and I have an internal blue flame. When heating up a substance within a test tube, make sure that you don't point the mouth of the test tube toward your face or someone else's. Be very cautious in lab. Hot and cold glassware look exactly the same. As I examine these two reactions, it certainly appears as if this is a fun and successful, safe science classroom. This reaction, it just didn't happen. What kind of year do you want to have? This is the kind of year that I want to have. Safe controlled, and a lot of fun. Whoa, ho, 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 never perform any unauthorized experiments or take chemicals from a stock room or, for, or from a lab. This was a good choice, this was a bad choice. All the way around. Three, two, one, zero. Glass is fragile and it can break. Never try this one at home. Okay. <laughs> Personal safety equipment includes goggles,
always wash your hands after finished handling. No, after you've, after handling them. You just turned it on me. <laughs> <laughs>